Today we're talking about another movie that in my opinion is a bit underrated and happens to be one of my favorite Richard Pryor movies, and I'm talking about the 1988 comedy, Moving. Now this movie is supposed to take place in New Jersey and Boise, Idaho, but 99% of it is filmed right here in Los Angeles. So today, we're hunting down the filming locations for Moving. Let's go see what we can find. The movie begins with a paper boy riding his bike down the sidewalk of a quiet residential neighborhood. He's actually riding down Blondie Street on the Warner Brothers Ranch in Burbank, California. As you can see, the houses look a lot different than they did in the movie. That's because this is footage that I took just about a week before everything on the ranch was demolished. The paper boy then uses this driveway to come out into the street and deliver a newspaper to the Partridge family house. He then approaches what was known as the Bel Air House, and this was the home of Arlo Pear, his wife, and their three kids. Now this is what the Bel Air House looked like just days before it was demolished, and this house probably had the biggest transformation from what you see in the movie. The next stop on his route is the Pear family's next door neighbor, Frank, who's played by none other than Randy Quaid, and the house that he lived in was the Bewitched House. This is the house from the TV show Bewitched. Now, although they did a lot of stuff to make this house look junky for the movie, like putting mismatched paint and overgrown weeds and hedges, this can still be recognized as the Bewitched House. And we'll talk more about Frank's house and the Pear family home later in the video. So Arlo's sound asleep and having a dream that he's using martial arts skills to beat the heck out of his next door neighbor, Frank. That is until he gets woken up by Frank mowing his lawn with his gigantic lawnmower. Arlo then stands in his bedroom, cursing at his next door neighbor through the window before eventually moving on with his day. So we see Arlo pull into the parking garage of the building that he works at. Again, not in New Jersey, but right here in downtown Los Angeles. And it was actually this building right here on my left, which appears to be a non-functioning building at the moment. But the way that we know that it was this building is actually by the building across the street. So when he pulls into the parking garage, you can see the building across the street. It says Pacific Grand Hotel, and it has an address of 416. Now you can see this building no longer is the Pacific Grand Hotel, but it does have the address of 416. You can see it right there on the front of the building on the glass. And you can also match up the designs right above the storefront, along with those fire escapes. And you can also match up the designs on the building right next door. So this right here would have been the driveway that he pulls the sob into. And then right in here is where he stops his car and gets out and hands the keys over to the parking attendant before heading into work. When Arlo gets into the lobby of the building he works at, he sees a woman waiting for the elevator that he's never seen before. He welcomes her to the building and offers to help her with her stuff. Arlo's surprised when he finds out that she's gonna be working for the same company that he works for but he's even more surprised when she tries to open up his office. That's because she's there to replace him. Arlo gets so angry that he has one of his nosebleeds, and after having a long argument with his boss, he ends up giving him the wrong finger. Wrong finger. I gave the man the wrong finger. Now the mall that they use in the movie is the Santa Anita Mall in Arcadia, California. And we don't really see a lot of this mall. It's really just used for a couple of quick scenes of Casey and her friend hanging out here. However, there is one quick establishing shot where we get a pretty good view of the inside of the mall. And as you probably could have guessed, it's changed a lot since the movie was made. After a very long and unsuccessful job search, Arlo finally gets a call for a job interview. Things go so well during the interview that they end up offering him the job. The only problem is the job's in Boise, Idaho. Once Arlo breaks the news to his family about the job being in Boise, things don't go as well as he would have hoped. But after a long talk between Arlo and his wife, Monica, they finally decide 
to move the family to Boise. We see one of Arlo's sons, either Randy or Marshall, at a school track meet, and this is where we find out that the boys use being twins to their advantage. Now, that scene was filmed here at El Segundo High School, home of the Eagles, and of course it was filmed out on the field, so let's go check it out. And it was somewhere right here on the back side of the grandstand where the other brother is waiting to join the race. So it's now time for the Pear family to find a new home in Boise, Idaho. And after looking at a couple of different houses that just aren't right, they finally find their dream home in Boise. And it was this house right here behind me, but it's not actually in Boise. It's right here in Santa Clarita, California. And as Arlo and Monica are walking through the house with the current owners, every time they comment about something that they really like about the house, the current owners jokingly reply with, We're taking it with us! <laughs> At least Arlo thinks it's a joke. And it's time for the Pear Family Yard Sale. Here's Arlo and Monica in their driveway, and behind them you can see the Partridge Family House. As Arlo and his friend walk through the front yard, you can see Arlo's front door behind him. As you can see, it changed a lot since the 80s. But you probably get the best shot of the entire house when Arlo's on the roof trying to take down their satellite dish. And look at how realistic that sky looks. Now, as you can see, the house looked a lot different in the movie. They actually added a second story to the house along with a dormer window above the garage just for the movie. Arlo and Monica get a call from their family friends letting them know that their daughter Casey is trying to get married just so she doesn't have to leave New Jersey. And she's trying to marry this guy. What time is it? Arlo's so angered by this that he tells Morris he'll be receiving bodily harm if he doesn't take his hands off of his daughter. Their family friends say that they have a spare room in their house and they'd be happy to let Casey stay there so she can finish high school. Arlo and Monica agree and Casey is happy. Morris, not so much. Well, it's moving day. And when the movers arrive, we get another good shot of the neighborhood, starting with the Pear family house and the Partridge family house. And as the truck comes around the corner, you can see Frank's house and an office building that looks a little bit out of place. Here's where the truck comes around the corner. Here's the Pear household. Here's Frank's house. And here's that office building. And this is actually how I figured out where the movie was filmed. As I was watching the movie, I noticed that office building and quickly recognized it because it can be seen off of the 134 freeway and I've passed by it countless times. Once I identified the office building, I knew that the movie was either filmed at Warner Brothers Studios or the Warner Brothers Ranch. So the movers that show up turn out to be the movers from hell that Arlo previously turned down for the job, but they now work for the moving company that Arlo did hire, so he's kinda stuck. As the Pear family leaves their neighborhood, they all give their next door neighbor, Frank, the wrong finger. And Frank stands right here in his driveway, pretending to shoot the Pear family with his rake. Leaving New Jersey, more like leaving Palos Verdes, cause that's where we are. We're actually on Palos Verdes Drive, about a block east of Rolling Hills Road. And roughly right about where I'm standing is where that sign was that said, you're now leaving New Jersey. Now just about everything here still matches up. See that grass down there that goes into a triangle? And it even still has the same rocks on it. The placement of the rocks is different, but they appear to be the same rocks. And then on one side of the street, you have the walking path. 
On the other side of the street, you have the grassy hill, which is now overgrown with trees. Also on that same side of the street, you have all of the utility poles. And then finally, you have the island going down the center of the street. This is definitely, without a doubt, the same spot where the Pear family is leaving New Jersey. So shortly into their journey, Arlo's kids tell them that they're hungry, and then they notice a restaurant on the other side of the street. So Arlo cranks the wheel to the left and pulls into the parking lot of this building right here. Now in the movie, it just says snack shop and souvenirs and gifts. It doesn't appear to have a name. It's now a hotel and a steakhouse, and a lot of stuff has changed on this building, but a lot of stuff is still the same. So you only see the building very briefly as he cuts across traffic, but you can see the building right next door, and you can also see this wall up here on the hill. You can also see these twisty chimneys, and basically this entire building, which still looks the same, it's just now painted a different color, and has a bunch of these awnings right here on the front patio. Now what you see the most is this section of the building over here, which at the time looked like a motel with some garages. The garages have now been converted into more motel rooms, but for the most part, the outside of this building still looks the same. So like I said, it's no longer a snack shop, it's now a fancy steakhouse, so the inside of this place doesn't look anything like it did in the movie. While inside the snack shop, Randy and Marshall find a magazine and on the cover of that magazine is the guy that Arlo hired to drive his Saab. And it turns out he has multiple personalities. So right now I'm driving south on Crenshaw Boulevard, coming away from Pacific Coast Highway, headed towards Palos Verdes. And right up here around the corner is where Brad is driving when he spots Arlo and his family in their station wagon. It's coming up right about here. Notice that house on the hill, this shed, the break in the divider right here, and then also this hillside. And then if you pause the movie in the right spot, all of that stuff that I just mentioned matches up. And then this is the view that you get when Brad takes off in the Saab. And all of this is what you would have seen out Arlo's window while they're driving up the hill. The Pear family finally arrives in Boise, Idaho. And as far as I know, this is the only shot that was actually taken in Boise. This is on Capitol Boulevard and University Drive, and a lot has changed here, but if you look hard enough, you can still find a lot of the same stuff that you see in the movie. Now, when the Pear family finally arrives to their new dream house, it turns out that the we're taking it with us joke actually wasn't a joke. The people that they bought the house from actually took parts of the house with them. Once they get inside, they find that they took the staircase, they took parts of the kitchen cabinet, they even took the swimming pool. But if we look on Google Earth, you can see that that swimming pool is still in the backyard. It has the exact same shape as the one that we see in the movie. So I don't know if they actually dug the pool out for the movie, or if maybe that's when they installed the pool, but this is definitely the same pool that we see in the movie. Now, just when Arlo thought that things couldn't get much worse, he hears a loud noise and takes a peek out the window and finds out that his new neighbor is Frank's brother Cornell, and he's got the same style lawnmower. Now, as if that wasn't enough, Brad finally shows up with Arlo's sob. So Arlo finally makes it to his new job in Boise, but that's right, you guessed it. Once again, not in Boise, here in downtown Los Angeles. It was this building right here behind me. The camera starts off pointing up at the top of the building and then pans down to where we see Arlo parking his Saab right in front of the front doors because there's always parking right in front of wherever you need to go. At least that seems to always be the way in every movie and TV show that you watch. So keeping with the theme of things going wrong, as soon as Arlo sits down at his new desk, he gets news cameras stuck in his face while reporters ask him about a scandal at his company, and he then finds out that his job is now obsolete. I just sharpened my pencil. So Arlo has a bit of a breakdown and heads to a local bar to have a few drinks. In the movie, it's the wooden leg, but in real life, it's the Buccaneer. And I was so happy when I got to the Buccaneer and found that it looks almost exactly the same as it did in the movie. 
All of the decor is the same, all of the paintings. Notice that painting right behind him and then those ports on either side of the door. There's that painting and there's those ports. Almost nothing has changed here. So thank you to the Buccaneer for keeping everything the same all of these years. Also, a huge thank you to Deborah at the Buccaneer for being so nice to me and letting me look around and take some video. She had no idea that they filmed this movie here and she was excited to find out about it. Now, when Arlo comes walking out of the bar to chase after the movers, he's standing right here in front of the front door and you can see the wooden door with the number 70 on it. And I believe this is the exact same door with the exact same number 70. You can also see that sign above the door and you can see these hinges, which also appear to be the same ones. You can also see just a little bit of this section of building next door. And when he jumps in his car, you can see the sign for the wooden leg and that threw me off for a while. I was searching for a bar called the Wooden Leg, but turns out it was fake. And when Arlo's about to back out of the parking space, you can see a lot more of the buildings next door to the bar. And then as he's driving off down the street, you get a view of the buildings across the street from the bar. So as Arlo's chasing after the moving truck, we see it make a right onto El Monte Avenue from Las Tunas Drive, and when it does, you get a good shot of this sign right here that says El Monte Avenue. A few moments later, Arlo comes around the corner, and when he does, you can see a building on the corner, which is now this CVS pharmacy. So the chase continues down El Monte Avenue, but in the opposite direction that they were originally going. We see them pass by this wash, and behind them, you can see one house, which is still there, but of course, it's now blocked by this giant tree. But if we come down the street just a little bit, there's the house that you see in the movie. So notice how they're in a residential area with lots of houses around them, and then they're all of a sudden in a completely different place. That's because they're now in Canyon Country, California, driving down Sierra Highway. And because of Arlo blocking the windshield of the truck, the truck then veers to the left and crashes through the gates of this building. Now notice that that patch of concrete just to the left of the building is still the same, and those mailboxes are also still there. Now in the movie, this was Boise Cascade building materials. In real life, it's JB Wholesale Roofing and Building Supplies, pretty similar but it was right here in this parking lot where Arlo finally defeats the movers. I can't believe I'm actually standing in the parking lot where Arlo uses his martial arts skills to beat all three movers. Awesome. So Arlo returns home with their stuff and it seems like things are gonna start turning around for Arlo. And just when he's starting to feel really good about himself, he realizes that there's one more thing that he's gotta take care of. So the ending of the movie takes place right here behind me. After Arlo comes home with their stuff and he's feeling really good about himself, he goes next door to confront his new neighbor and they're standing right there in that driveway when Arlo pulls the spark plug wire off of his lawnmower. And it was actually right here where Arlo and Cornell face off against each other. Looks a little different now because there's now trees in between the two houses, but that's where it was. And as Frank's brother is about to confront Arlo, Arlo's dog comes to his rescue. Arlo then goes walking up the hill in between the two houses and he stands right there at the top of the hill and he gives Cornell the wrong finger. And that's the end of our movie. The pair family lives happily ever after. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>